Welcome to this virtual tour of the Abbey Quarter. The aim of this tour is to provide an introduction to the heritage significance of this part of Reading, which incorporates the Reading prison site. I will also provide a little bit of background to the recent and not so recent planning and development history of this hidden part of Reading Town Centre. Here's a map showing the route we will follow taking us from the Town Hall Square, through St Lawrence's Churchyard, the Forbury Gardens, the Abbey Ruins and around the prison. Then back along the Holy Brook, through Forbury Square to Market Place. The first thing to emphasise is that Reading Abbey was one of the most important religious sites in medieval England. The Abbey Church was founded in 1121 and the Abbey grounds covered about 12 hectares. The Abbey Church was one of the largest in the country, with a tower that would have reached two-thirds up the current Blade building. At the time it was bigger than both Westminster Abbey and Winchester Cathedral. Part of the reason for its size and prestige was the fact that it was a royal monastery, founded by Henry I with the intention that he would be buried there which indeed he was. It was used for royal weddings and Parliament sat here when the plague prevented them from meeting in London. After the dissolution of the monasteries by Henry VIII in, in 1539, it was still used as a royal residence, particularly by Elizabeth I. We start our tour in Town Hall Square next to the statue of Queen Victoria. To the right of St Lawrence's Church, was the main gate to the abbey. The church itself was built by the abbot for the use of the townspeople, so it faces out from the abbey precinct. This church acted as a competitor to the original church of St Mary's, which is on the west side of the town centre, just off St Mary's Butts. The marketplace was established just outside this west gate, also as a competitor to the original market in St Mary's Butts. We will be returning here at the end of our tour. Scallop shells adorn the front of the church. A scallop shell is the symbol of St James and these acknowledge the most prominent relic held by the Abbey, the mummified hand of St James. You might have noticed that the university crest includes three scallop shells in its design to reflect this link. This area is also home of Reading Town Hall, built on the site of the refectory of the Abbey Hospitium and extended during the 1870s. The nearest sections were designed by Sir Alfred Waterhouse, who lived in Foxhole's house on White Knight's campus. He also designed the Natural History Museum in London and the Manchester Town Hall. It now houses the Town Museum, which is well worth a visit. The concert hall, the registry office, a bar and cafe and community rooms that are used for various public consultations and events. This area was subject to a bombing raid in February 1943. The church still bears the scars of shrapnel from the bombs which killed 43 people and damaged parts of the town hall and surrounding buildings. Taking the passage to the left of St Lawrence's Church, we stop in the churchyard near the remnants of the Abbey Hospitium. This was used to accommodate the pilgrims who travel from all over the country and even from Europe to see the relics housed in the Abbey. In modern day terms, you might consider this a 400 bed hotel. And this reminds us of the economic significance of the Abbey, which gain, gained income from the gifts brought by pilgrims. But the Abbey also increased its wealth from the marketplace outside the West Gate, a mill that it operated on the Holy Brook, the wharf it constructed on the River Kennet, and from the lands it owned throughout the south of England. Between 1878 and 1906, the Hospitium and adjacent buildings were used by University College Reading 
an extension college of the University of Oxford and later to become the University of Reading itself. So this is where the university started its life. Crossing the road to enter the Forbury Gardens, we stop next to the Maywand Lion. Here we can see some of the components of the Victorian pleasure gardens that were established in the Forbury after Reading Corporation had purchased the Abbey grounds in the early 19th century. The gardens are now Grade 2 listed. The line itself is a war memorial to 328 members of the Royal Berkshire Regiment killed at the Battle of Maywan in Afghanistan in 1881. Given the increased profile of Black Lives Matters, it is interesting to note that it doesn't acknowledge the deaths of 341 British Indian troops who also died in that battle. Walking up Forbury Hill, we reach one of the best vantage points in the area. It is now thought that the mound was created from the rubble from the abbey after its dissolution. Although it is a favoured location for the site of Reddings Castle, which was originally constructed by the Vikings. The Forbury was used as a gun emplacement during the English Civil War, when a royalist garrison was put under siege in 1643 by parliamentarian forces. Significant fortifications were put in place around the whole town and much destruction was done to the abbey remains as part of that process. The abbey church would have extended for 450 feet to the east into the Reading Prison Precinct from its main west door, which was near to Henry I's Memorial Cross. The abbey's inner gateway lies just outside the Forbury Gardens. This is a Victorian restoration of the original gateway, which collapsed in a storm in 1861. It was used as a schoolroom during the early 19th century by the Abbey School. Jane Austen attended for a few years with her sister Cassandra. It has recently been restored as part of a 3.1 million heritage lottery project, which has been used to stabilise and repair the main Abbey ruins as well. It also funded all the new signage which you can see around the area greatly improving heritage interpretation in and around the Abbey Precinct. Moving on down Forbury Hill towards the Abbey ruins, we stop briefly near St James's Church. This is a Roman Catholic church built in the 1840s, designed by another famous architect, Augustus Pugin. Around the church you can see huge pieces of masonry which are remnants of the ruins of the original Abbey Church. In 1643, the ruins were blown up by the Royalist garrison as part of the Civil War fortifications. Also nearby is the Spanish Civil War Memorial, which was moved here in 2015. This illustrates the cultural and symbolic importance of the Forbury Gardens as a place to commemorate various causes. Moving under the access tunnel, which was added in 1860, we enter the main ruins of the abbey. It must be remembered that the ruins seen here are just the remnants of the inner core of the walls. Originally, these would have been dressed in smooth cut stonework and would have reached twice as high as they do today. The ruins cover the south transept of the abbey church and a number of the adjoining monastic buildings, including the chapter house, the dormitory and the refectory. The recent restoration project used green roof principles to dress the tops of the wall to reduce erosion from rain and freeze-thaw action. The very close proximity of the prison walls is a notable feature. This is something you will need to address in your project work. How can the redevelopment of the prison retain the feeling of enclosure, but improve public access and permeability? 
We now exit the main abbey ruins and reach the River Kennet. The monks used the River Thames and the Kennet to transport materials, goods and people. A substantial wharf was constructed here to facilitate loading and unloading. In the 1980s, the site to the west and south was going to be developed for the new County Hall for Berkshire. However, the project fell through and the assembled site was sold for private office development. The subsequent scheme provided riverside walkways but very few other community benefits. The river runs alongside the prison site and this is another key issue and opportunity you need to address in your project work. How might the prison redevelopment handle the risk of flooding yet also maximise the opportunities to integrate with and enhance the existing riverside amenities. The prison, or otherwise known as the jail, is the outcome of a number of phases of development. In the 1780s it was decided to replace the old county and borough prisons in Castle Street and Friar Street and a new county house of correction was built on the current site. This land was part of the Abbey Precinct, being previously occupied by the Lady Chapel and the Monk Cemetery. The House of Correction quickly became inadequate and within 60 years the site was redeveloped. The new jail opened in 1844 and was designed by the prominent architect Sir George Gilbert Scott. It was based on the new model prison of Pentonville, which initiated the separate system of punishment where prisoners were kept in solitary confinement. The London Illustrated News described it as the most conspicuous building and architecturally by far the greatest ornament to the town. There has been further additions and replacements subsequently and much of the ornament was lost in the functional remodelling that took place in the 1970s. The most prominent feature of the prison from the outside is the seven metre wall which was added in the 1970s. This is a key feature and a constraint that you will need to address in the project. Inside the prison walls it is the main cruciform building which provides the historic centrepiece of the prison. Reading Jail was immortalised by one of its most famous inmates, Oscar Wilde who wrote the damning Ballad of Reading Jail after his 18 months of incarceration in the prison between 1895 and 1897. His cell has become famous in its own right and a memorial has been established just outside the prison wall in Chestnut Walk. The Victorian edition of Chestnut Walk is a feature in its own right and new trees have recently been planted to replace the original ones which were suffering from disease. Although the prison site is not open to the general public, here is a short video showing you what it's like inside.
To the east of the prison, across the Forbury Road, is the area that was once dominated by the Huntley and Palmer's Biscuit Factory. In its Edwardian heyday, the factory complex covered 12 hectares and employed 6,000 people. It had its own internal railway system and was the largest biscuit factory in the world. The factory closed in 1976 and during the 1990s the site was redeveloped for offices and a retail park. The only factory building to be kept was the former social club which was converted into social housing. In 2018 a partnership between L&Q and Barclay Homes were given planning permission to redevelop part of the retail park for 726 residential units. This area has been branded as Huntley Wharf and the scheme is now under construction. The surrounding new development both here and to the north of the prison is another important component of your project work. How can the prison redevelopment link in with these areas and make the most of the opportunities they provide? Moving back along the Kennet and then across Abbey Square, we follow the Holy Brook down beside the Blade. The Blade itself was completed in 2009. It is the tallest building in Reading, standing at 86 metres high and is visible from all the main roads leading into the town. It looms over the Abbey Quarter, but was considered by the planners to provide an innovative design solution to the redevelopment of the existing site, which was constrained and poorly laid out. Right next to the blade, we have the last part of the Abbey ruins, the Abbey Mill. This was another key component of the economic base of the Abbey, providing the power to grind the corn to make bread for the monks and others in the town. The original mill was substantially rebuilt in 1860 and it continued in use until 1959. The planning approval for the blade included a section 106 agreement which provided money for renovating and improving access to the mill. Cutting across the poorly laid out Abbey Square we go through to Forbury Square which also has an interesting planning history. The original plans for the IDR proposed a four-lane highway running through this area, dropping through a tunnel under the Forbury Gardens and emerging at a roundabout on the north side. The Prudential even built an office building to allow the IDR to run underneath, but a public outcry led again by the Civic Society and financial cutbacks led to the scrapping of the eastern and northern sections of the proposed urban motorway. In 2000 Argent purchased the Prudential building and submitted a planning application for a mixed-use development including a 20-storey residential tower. This was based on the council's then recently published Reading 2020 vision which had suggested that high-rise buildings would be acceptable around the town centre. The scale of the resultant public objections forced the council to clarify that high buildings were acceptable in central Reading, but not at this very sensitive location. Argent went back to the drawing board to produce the more low rise and classically inspired office buildings that we see here today. Along with the blade, this scheme provides a test of whether town centre office locations near to public transport can compete with Reading's suburban business parks. Returning now to the western end of the Abbey Quarter, we turn left into Marketplace. As mentioned previously, the Marketplace was established by the Abbot as a form of local economic development to help sustain the Abbey. For years during and after the Abbey's existence, it was the main area of commercial exchange for Reading Town. This is reflected in the Corn Exchange building on the west side of the square, built in 1826. On the east side of Marketplace was the entrance to Sutton Seeds, one of Reading's three Bs, this time for bulbs. 
the premises of the Royal Berkshire Seed Establishment, as it was formerly called, stretched out behind Market Place into the Abbey area, covering 2.5 hectares. The historic frontages of Market Place have been eroded over the years, particularly during the 1960s when a number of buildings were redeveloped. However, in 2007 the Market Place gained a facelift which improved the public space if not many of the buildings themselves. So that ends our virtual walking tour of the Abbey Quarter. I wish you all the best with your project work. Do make sure that you take on board and address the significant heritage and cultural value of the buildings and spaces I have talked about and do address some of the design and access issues I have touched upon. Good luck. I wish you all the best.